All right, we are out here. 2021 Giants Fan Fest. Usually you start these off with a woo, but where's where's Snacks? Snacks, come here. Snacks, what do you think the Giants record is going to be this year? You want me to be honest? Yes. 3 and 14 at best. Boo! <laughs> Let's get some boos for Snacks to start. 3 and 14! And now you know why he doesn't have a headset. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're out here. I got some gifts for Yay, both of you. Yay, I heard that. <laughs> I, I got some gifts for Entertainer. Okay. Courtesy of one of our listeners. I appreciate that. Wow. And I got this for you. Oh, thank oh, you. Wow. Yes, much needed. Yes. I saw that in my hey, wait, wait, It's COVID time. We've got hair in there. It's actually mine. You can't oh, keep I it. I um, appreciate that. It was hi. a thought that counts. We're out here. It's Bobby Skinner, Justin Pennick, Chris the Entertainer, and then the star of the show, License Plate Guy. Yeah. Some star. So is this the first fan fest that you've like ever been, like? Is this the first fan fest the Giants have ever done? Like, I don't know. No, actually, the, a fan fest. Yes, I mean they had an open practice at MetLife. I I don't like talking about it because we call that the Dominic Hickson game. Sure. But uh, that's it at MetLife Stadium. To be honest with you, it was a what was it like a blue white game, and it, I got to be honest with you, it was awesome. It was also 150 degrees just like today, but it was it was awesome to open up the stadium and then. I guess because of uh, either the turf or, the, or the, the, the injury, whatever it was, they never did it again. Then, then they built this monstrosity, and that's it. Right on. We got Chris the Entertainer, the, the king of Giants YouTube. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about doing stuff like in person? Because you do it like, with Bad Dog, it's through stream. Yeah. We did our first live stuff yesterday, and I don't think I've ever been that uncomfortable in my entire life. <laughs> but I, I got used to it as the day went along. Yeah, this is my first – well – I, you know, I've, I've gone to Met games and people have recognized me before. I've been to a couple of Giant games, but, like, this is the first time, like, an organized, like, you know, event where Giant fans and people that actually watch my channel, and it's incredible. I mean, I, I, well, I, I remember watching LPG during the 2008 Super Bowl, and I'm, I'm sitting, like, five feet away from him doing a show with him. It's incredible, and um, never thought when I started YouTube it would be anything like this. So, I, And you guys did a great job setting everything up. I appreciate it. Yes, kudos. Thank you for uh, Chris and Maddie Mass yes, helping Maddie out with Mass, everything. Producer Maddie Mass, yes, thank you. Justin, what are you doing? What's going on with you? Um, I just posted on Instagram <laughs> that the G line made it. <laughs> Luckily, the the G line made it right before we recorded. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. I mean, this is really really cool. Um, yeah. I'm very glad that the old wind at the old stadium has made it today because I feel like <laughs> the new stadium it hasn't been as windy historically. So, but this is just awesome. I mean, this is like our first Talking Giants event, and the fact that you know Bobby and I we've been going strong for a year. Talking Giants has been going strong for two years, and the fact that we're able to all get together and we have a lot of friends that help make this happen. I mean, there's a bunch of even just people that aren't even here. There's a bunch of other YouTubers here, a bunch of other podcasters here, um, and it's really great that everybody's here. So I can't thank everybody enough for being here. I forgot one person, Danny King. Whoa, Danny King. Ooh. Danny King. Ooh. Where's Danny King? Him, I'm realizing lady. that most people can't hear. Can you hear? Can anyone hear us well? Danny King, come here. Danny King was talking to a lady. That's what was happening. Yes. Cockbuck. What is the weather in East Rutherford <laughs> and Afghanistan? I mean, in East Rutherford, it's, it's kind of hot. I've been sweating kind of profusely. I took a New Jersey transit, and I was sweating so bad. It was like a sauna in there. Middle East, I honestly think it might be the same type of weather. Just a little more sunny and a little more, little more sandy, a little more sunny. We might be approaching 100 over there, gentlemen. Thank you, Danny. You're very welcome. Weatherman Dan, everybody. Good, Good job. Man. Good job. Weatherman Dan. All right, Justin, what do we want to do? I kind of – I forgot that we – like, I knew we were doing this, but sure. I forgot. It's like, hey, maybe have something ready no, when we get we started. Didn't. And I have nothing. You know what? Anything. Something you just said absolutely just You lead clicked. the way. He's, he was talking about the wind at the stadium, and it was bothering me the whole time. Like, yeah, why, do, why have we not felt that? It's yeah. historically – No, because – well, I know life, why. Yeah. No. Oh, why? Because when the hell is it windy, we don't have playoff games where the sure. Giants were talked about, where the wind helped us, where the tunnels were open. Well, also, I have a we don't have any of that crap. I have a theory, but, you know, Jimmy Hoffa was buried under yes. old Giants Stadium. So the fact that Jimmy Hoffa, were, the stadium isn't lying over Jimmy Hoffa, maybe that's why it's not as windy so there's not as much uh, <laughs> that could be. forces. That could, that could be it, too. <laughs> Extraterrestrial, is that what it's called when you're a ghost? Probably not. Are we all members of the David Sills Army? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
I mean, what, what, what? How do you qualify to be part of the David Sills army? That David Sills will make the roster, and he's going. We're going to look back at him as the best undrafted free agent besides Victor Victor Cruz. I'm rooting for him to make the roster. People believe in That's it. That's wild. I think he's got a good shot to make the roster, but I'm not picking him to make the roster. Okay. Right, you're picking Alec, Alex Bachman over him, aren't you? I'm going with Board, actually. CJ. Board. Oh, that bores me. I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that that bird. excites me, but I think Joe Judge. I think special teams. And I'm going with Board as the last receiver to make the team. I, he's, I think he might be the guy I'm most forward looking to watching because we've heard nothing about da- everything about David Stills. I've, ever, I've never actually just seen him do anything in person or like in a real game setting. I mean, what he's doing last week. Didn't he just put up like four or five scores in, in, in one day? It was my biggest social media day of yeah. the year was the David, David Stills, Stills video. Army. The army behind David <laughs> Stills is, is unreal, and I love it. And I, I, to start camp, I was off it, and I'm back on the army. So I'm ready for that. Patty, Patty came on our show, Patricia Trania, and um, we're on a, I guess we're on a first name, nickname basis yes. now. Um, but Patricia Trania came on the show. She's like, it, it's kind of perfect. Kenny Galladay, light, but very light. Like, very, very light Kenny Galladay-esque. Because he makes, like, the contested catches like he does. I didn't expect him to be that big. He's 6'4". He's big. Yeah, yeah. he's big too. He's huge. Yeah. yeah. Former quarterback. Mm. That's everybody's fun fact. Yeah. And he was a gunner. <laughs> um Jordan Renan, Arch Stapleton, Brandon London came by, so that's cool. We have all the stars. Got a bunch of, like, the Giants Rush guys, they're down there doing their thing. A bunch of people who do YouTube stuff, which is cool. What, actually, what? actually uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Mario Manningham is supposed to stop by, so. Is he going to? That's a whole nother question. I know how it goes, man. It's tough. <laughs> that I, is I, a I whole get nother it. question. I, think about that. Mario Manningham caught the second most important like catch in probably Giants history. Correct. Now look at the way you get mobbed around here. Imagine Mario Manningham. Like it's got to be maybe he's not as recognizable with the long blonde hair, <laughs> but it's like it's just it's impossible to talk to you out here cuz you are like the star of the Giants. I don't know about that, but you know, it's it's funny cuz at the draft party Dorney Holmes and I put together in Rockland County, Mario was walking around. Maybe maybe 10 to to 15 Giants were walking around. And it was tough. It was tough for them. I mean, I couldn't, you couldn't place them over here. You couldn't place them over there. They were just mobbed. And people had, you know, five, six, seven, ten things to sign. Because, yeah. you know, I didn't have security when it came to, you know, individuals like that. So I signed my first stuff things today. I which, saw. Congratulations. I wasn't prepared. My signature was horrible. Well, I was going to say, people are going to realize that <laughs> my signature practice. is different every single time. Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm calling, I'm calling BS on that. Someone made me do a carpet, now, and it was... I'm calling BS. First of all, when you were kids, you didn't, you didn't practice your signature like you were making it to... But I didn't no. practice my, it Here's well. my signature. Okay, fair My last fair name enough. is an S and a straight line and a dot. <laughs> That's what I do, too. I do Stick the C, with scribble with a G. That's Stick it. Stick with that. Like yeah, th- this minute. was me trying my hardest. Hold on a second. You're like. I always have a two dollar <laughs> bill because I'll never be broke. Hold on a second. You're like seven two three fifty, and you didn't practice your signature, making it to the pros. So I'm calling BS on you. My issue is when I had that chance. I had. I like these two much <laughs> of the time. I think you have a legitimate chance to make this offensive line. Because because I, I, I'm a. You, tell you, if there's I, one thing I'm worried about. People are down on the line. No one's down on the line as that bad. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. I, I, you know, looking at this season, looking at this team, I'm pretty confident everywhere except for the line. I, I, I like the defense. I think Jones with the added weapons, if we could block, could get the job done. Man, the line scares the hell out of me. And, and, and that's why I love you, Bobby, Because and, and just You guys are hog molly guys. And that's why I think we get along. But I mean, I, you, was that a was that a fact joke you just got? <laughs> not at all. No, no, we're, we're into the trenches. That's where games we're, are won. He's trying to sh- the shirt. Go buy our shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Go buy the hog molly. This shirt. is a this is something. Which offensive lineman scares you the most? Matt, Sh- it's Shane Matt Lemieux. Pitt. Shane Lemieux. Most people say. Sh- Here's I'm the thing: you. is Shane Lemieux. And we t- we talked about him today on our PPP episode. He's got a path to get better at pass blocking, but I don't think he'll ever be a great pass blocker. Matt Parrott can be a great pass blocker, but he could – and I, I, he has all the ability. If he's not good, that is way worse because – Well, it's just, a tackle. It's going to be jo- it's gonna yeah. be in Jones' lap all yes. day. No. Whereas even like if you go look at the bad Shane Lemieux plays, it led to some sacks. But a lot of times Jones got out of the pocket right away. Right. Where at right tackle, man, that's he is right in your lap, so that worries me a little bit. Yeah. What about you? Just have Lemieux pull. I love that's it. all I keep hearing about is that he loves to pull and he loves to kill someone when he pulls. I, I – w- I said it the other day because they took that group picture together. 
I want these guys to be the guys so bad. Don't don't they have? Maybe it's because I'm just started doing this. Don't they have the feel of that deal? Soy like maybe I don't know, but it just feels like they're tight, like that group was. They do actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that. And yes, I think I think everybody sitting here and everybody watching and everywhere they want them to be the group too. We're tired of them not being the group. So yeah, we all want them to be the freaking group. And you you know you brought that up with the line, man. What, when are we taping this? In, in 2021? Or are we taping this 2018? Or when are 2016? It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. Right. I mean, it's, come on. It, enough's enough. And it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Can you explain the jersey? Oh, man. Come on, man. We got Joe Judge's college jersey. I love that so much. And Joe Judge's, uh, as soon as he was picked as a giant coach. And then, of course, we got the take a lap patch. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. We got the take a lap in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, getting sprayed down in practice when everybody, I guess, fell in love are with them. Are those the actual numbers of the people that were in the background? Yeah, those are them. I like that. That's literally them. And then, of course, Don't you know, around. his uh, carrying. I know, that's Patches. We awesome. talked about it when you were on the show. That picture is a cool picture. I don't think we talked about how insane that it he just. It is to lift them. <laughs> like, it looks like, it's not like, it, you can tell a picture when someone's, like, straining. It's like, all right, take a picture, take a picture. Yeah. It looks like he just put them on his shoulders and, like, all right, let's go. Yeah. The cool, <laughs> coolest thing about the the. This patch, when he lifted up the guys, is I guess it made its way around social media, and I, I got a, uh, a message from a third party that Judge would like a half a dozen. So I had cool. gotten him a half a dozen of them. Never talked to him about it, but That's awesome. I will. He's got those in the shaking pictures. Have you yeah, met Judge yet? I met him one time, and uh, he was on the move. It was, it was sort of like when... When Bobby met him, did at, you ambush yeah. him like a scumbag? <laughs> you know, I would yeah. never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Joe Judge hates me. Was your title? So yeah, you, no, no I ambushing. I said that to just get in front of it. If he did hate me, that was but, great. Like, I'm aware that I ambushed you, and I'm very uh, sorry. Honestly, could there be any other coach who would probably love you guys more than the head coach of the New York Football Giants right now? I don't know. I defended Shermer pretty heavy when he was getting heat, but no, I I, th I do think he he likes us. I, I think mean, he. he he talked about Little Caesars in a press conference, not brought up. Hey. A week after I told a story about almost fighting someone in a Little Caesars. That There's has no to way be that's it, a bro. Yeah, no, that has to be And it was right after it. his his biggest win versus Philly. I could have sworn I saw him drinking his a Gatorade yesterday, and I had a Gatorade the other day. <laughs> so yes, I'm fully on board with that, Bobby. He once said "us versus the world," and I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Yep, that's us." But in reality, it's just a very popular uh, phrase. Uh, Justin, yes. Do you think we'll see some laps today? I besides the one that had me almost dead. I started the big at the ten, at this start at the front. I was at the back towards the end. Got a really good video and got some good pictures too. I think it, if we can do some hey Maddie Mass, if we could do some funky things with those pictures I took and you know maybe make them look some good, we can we can literally like sell those pictures. He didn't um, take the lap. I did not. I was recording. He was recording. He had a great excuse. I had. I was doing the old. I made the. I wish I did. I, I will tell you. I will tell you a funny thing. My friend, <laughs> my friend Danny was praying he didn't have to take the lap too. The guy that wears the helmet all the time, and he was like, I, I, is, "Is anybody going to watch your plates when you take a lap?" So I just stay. I'm like, "Good." Yeah, someone's. Okay, I you got you. you. Stay back and watch. Plates. I almost wish someone did try and run away with those plates, dragging them across. <laughs> yeah, all hundred exactly. I very much. I badly want to see a lap, but more than a lap, I want to see Joe Judge just eviscerate somebody. <laughs> That's and that's that's a snacks word by the way, eviscerate. But, um, yeah. 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 I, I just feel like he's gonna keep it clean. For I know. The fans. I know because there's kids and he seems yeah. to have that did you social know the, awareness. Did you yeah. know at, in the high school video you could almost hear like I'm trying to relate. He kept on saying I, I, I. I was like, that's the Joe Judge I know. Yeah. All, all things, all. He's go, he's definitely gonna have a great pep talk. I I, I fully expect that. Is he gonna? You think he's yeah, gonna yeah, talk? Yeah, yeah, You saw you saw what he did. I think it was in Jersey. Where, Newark, yeah, yeah, Newark. yeah, whatever it was. He had the pep talk. He's yeah. going to do the same thing. He's going to come I, out. He's not going to have a better talk, pep talk than No, of course than not. I than you. Okay, right, no. Thank you. I appreciate that. What you if he me? says it's but us versus the world? Do you he, think he'll leave some type of He's going to do the same us? thing he did in his opening press conference. He's going to say we want the team to resemble yeah. the people of the city. Yeah. We want the, the hard hat mentality. That's what he's going to say today. Hey, let me, let me ask you guys something. What do, what do you guys expect from tonight? Because, I, I mean, I don't. Is I don't, it going to be a scrimmage? I don't expect any 11 on 11. You don't think so? No, I do not. I want it all. I, I, I mean, didn't he, didn't he say, didn't he say that it wouldn't, even the, Gi the Jets Giant game wouldn't be fourth anything? Pre he said they're going to treat it as if it's a fourth right. preseason game. That's and why all you go all out tonight. Oh, that's why. I got Come you. Come on. 
I'm with you. I just I think we're going to see shells. I think we're going to see some some offensive uh, uh, linemen and defensive banging. I think you're going to see some seven on seven. They publicized it as all pants. Did they? Pants. I said you're going to get some banging. I just okay. don't see eleven on eleven. You think they'll put And I'm with you. There? I'm with you. No. I just I'm I am so blissfully ignorant right now about what I expect when I get in there. I just want. I want contact. I want football to contact sport. I want yelling and screaming and cursing. <laughs> I want all the cursing in the world. That's and what that's I want. just that's from you I'm and expecting. Bobby. Correct. Right. And well, who knows what happened on the field? He wanted to kill me earlier today. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was, was ready. Yeah. I'll usually po- poke his buttons a little bit, but I was like, I'm going to stay away from this one because he was – he wanted to kill me because we were, we were going to be late. Let me ask thank you, you to Topher Pete on the grill who went and got the Topher food Pete. and saved the day. Woo! Thank you. Let me ask you, Bobby. You're from Florida. Now, did you you grew up in the Jersey area when you were a kid? Born in Jersey, moved to Florida when I was like two or three years old. So okay. I'm, a, I'm a Florida boy through and through. So you're not used to New York traffic? You're no. used to that laid back? I don't even like Orlando, and New York is, is pretty brutal. So how did that feel when you came here to see that, that, that fast-paced mentality of the New York traffic? I feel like it's a culture shock for a lot of I people. I mean, it's... I've been in bad like it's not like a oh my gosh, but it, it just sucks. I hate it. Yeah. And then I, I you know, I said to Justin and I think this set him off. I was like, you know, people want me to move up here eventually. And I was oh. like, every time I come here I remember that I'm never going to. I have to defend myself. And he's like, You you go to the worst places in New York, the yeah. Bronx, the uh, Kearney, New Jersey. Just I mean Ke- flipped Kearney. out on me. And I was like, I'm I'm you know what, I'm gonna let him vent because he's pissed off at me right well, now. Well, first of all, that yelling was not yelling. It's because I'm from New Jersey. There's a certain type of volume that's an expectation. And it's just you, talking. You, it's just talking. But I know correct. him. He, I could tell he was mad. No, but he was – no, because also – And I said there's trash all over New Jersey, and it was a great joke, and he didn't laugh. No. And I had a water bottle, and I was like – disrespect my state. I said, I'll wait till we get to Jersey to throw the water bottle out the window. <laughs> you don't disrespect – and I didn't laugh at that either. No, but he was <laughs> – Bobby's right. like, you know, oh, we spent time in the Bronx going between – 87 George Washington Bridge and right by Yankee Stadium and then also Carney, New Jersey. We went to that Walmart and Bobby's like, this is why I'm not moving here because there's trash all. <laughs> like, well, you're not going to the shore. You're not going to Central Jersey. You're not going to Jersey City. I mean, and Justin, it- give him give him a break. There's trash all over the place. I mean, it's been. Hey, look, look, what would you I rather, trash or, or needles? I mean, he lives yeah. in Florida, so <laughs> what do you want? Do you want to use needles or would you rather the bottles? It's, it's, take a pick. My county That's is pretty this- good. It consumes the second most alcohol per capita in the entire uh, United States. I believe that. Second to Reno, Nevada. Where is that? Is that? It's fact. Yeah, it's on my Facebook from like 2009. I need, it's probably I need. updated since then, but it's, I just remember posting it on Facebook when I was in high school. Like, this is cool, and now it's like and that kind of sucks actually. I believe that. Um, what are you looking forward to the most out of this practice? Well, like you said, I don't know what to expect in terms of, you know, what we're going to see when we're in there. But, um, you know, obviously I'm hoping – the thing I'm looking at more so in the first preseason game, but obviously I want to see it here, is is the offensive line. I I think that's that's what I'm most concerned with. Um, Tony as well. I want to see how they're using Tony. We've seen clips in, um, you know, on Twitter and so on and so forth, using him in motion. We're all very concerned with that with Jason Garrett, uh, being that he's not the most creative guy in the world. But Mm – um, yeah, I think that's what I'm looking at as well, how they're going to u- utilize Tony. Do you think we see him on Saturday? We didn't Justin talk about it yesterday. I think we will. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot, but maybe a little bit, of, you know, in the uh, punt returner, Barkley? kick returner. No chance. I'm just kidding. Okay. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I posed the question, and I put, I put up to a poll, and it literally was 50-50. If he's fully cleared, and he mm-hmm. may not be, for that Patriots game, I would give him three carries in that game. Get those first hits out of the way. Just so curious. This- why? Get just to get accustomed to contact. Way. Get you can three do that in hits practice, out of the though. way in Denver. But you can They don't tackle in practice, though. Get the three hits out of the way at MetLife versus Denver. But if three tackle, like, I he's get not gonna, there's free injuries and stuff. He's not going to even smell the field until Denver. I'm with you on that. Do you think there's any chance it won't be in Denver, though? It might be in it's, Washington or Well, it's definitely not going to be Atlanta. in Denver. Well, you know what I mean. I'm just kidding. I said it too. I said it too. I think. I think. Uh, Are you gonna wear the Pat Shermer jersey for that game? I might. Oh, wow. He's up. You have killer. a Pat Shermer jersey? He's I do. Killer. Do you have? Is somebody I do like not sli- have a McAdoo jersey. Instead of the diving in the mud, is it? Is it? He's somebody sleeping? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's okay. looking at it. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that I think the media did a great job at, or is doing a great job, or the Giants are at pushing us off, expecting him to be in the second or third game. I think he's 100% ready for the first game. I hope so. Now, let me ask you this, and I agree with you. I think he's going to play the first game. I don't think he's going to get a ton of touches. Yeah. Because I look at it, we're playing Thursday night football. It's three days rest. He's coming off the injury. I'm with you. I think he's going to be 100%, but you're talking about a guy who hasn't played in the preseason more than likely, a guy that hasn't played a full training camp. 
I think they ease him in. I think like five to ten touches the first game. Did you guys forget how good he was? Because I really did. Yeah, I saw and your tweet about that. When he got activated from the pup, I went and like pulled up an all highlight clip, and I was like, I know people have you know opinions on the running back stuff, but it's like when he's healthy, he's the greatest in the world at what he does, yeah. and it's and it's, and, and it could if he stays healthy, he could be like the greatest ever. Like it, it's not a crazy opinion to say if he stays healthy, he could be the greatest ever. And it's like, and I forgot, I almost forgot how good he was. You know why you forgot? That's why I told you to wake up. We didn't get to see him. Have and you seen Joe the Judge comments? Joe Judge told me not to fall asleep, <laughs> and I fell asleep. So I, that was what that lap was for. But I'm sure you get the same comments on your channel that I get on mine. There were people last year that were trying to convince me that Wayne Gallman's as good as Saquon Barkley. Oh, yeah? I, I feel like... Jo- happening? Yo, it was happening? Any Gallmanites here? Any and- Gallmanites? I love Wayne Gallman. He's great. He's Are not you a Gallmanite? Saquon- you know what? I would consider myself a Gallmanite. Yep. I'm an Alfredite. <laughs> now for that. But he's not—he's not Saquon Barkley. All right, what do you think of this take? I have a take about. Oh, not even Morris. close. I don't think Wayne Gallman's even good. To be I, honest, I have a take about no, Alfred Morris, good. and it's one of my favorite takes that I've ever had. Alfred Morris is so slow that he allows rushing plays to actually set up in front of him. Is that a bad take or a good take? <laughs> the blocking. It Pretty allows, good take. Yeah. Pretty good take. Thank you. Yeah. I've said this like ten times this off season, but if Alfred Morris is on the team next year, he's coming on the show next year. <laughs> um, What's your fascination with Alfred Morris? Yeah, really. It really is more anti Wayne Gallman than it is oh, wow. pro <laughs> Alfred Morris. <laughs> he did a good job last year, but though. You became you're not a Gallmanite. You become an anti Wayne Gallman. Well, here was my thing with Wayne Gallman. Like last year in that role, he did well. Like I'm not, I'm not, you know, he's not a receiver. But the issue is when you have Saquon, like he 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 he, he needs carries. Like he needs volume. And with Saquon, he's never going to get that. So when like he just like when you look at it, when he's the backup. He doesn't like have good. He doesn't have good yards when he's the starter, and and you know he's never going to be the starter. So that's. I, I think I think I feel the coach, bad trashing him right now. I think the coaching staff was on the same page as what you're on right Shermer now. Shermer didn't. I mean, Shermer someone had Buck did Allen just didn't like. Him. Yeah, someone just didn't like him. Period. It's kind of crazy. I like him. I'm with you. I'm with, yeah. Gallman did a good job last year. Um, yeah, he did well. I, but he's replaced. Well, I'm with I you. I like the bust his balls. I think I think Booker could do just as well. Let's Corey Clement, way. too. Booker is more I, diverse. I'm, I'm on that page, too. I mm-hmm. think Corey Clement is I'm a good on. running back. He's one of the guys that I'm most excited to now jump in the gun to the preseason preview. Oh, I'm pumped for the preseason He's one game. of the guys that I'm most excited to see, you know, because he is technically the number three running back on the depth chart, so he should be getting a little bit more reps oh. than, you know, than the starters, than, like, you know, Devontae Booker, for example. So I'm excited to see, like, where he exactly is and what the team thinks of him and how he looks, so. I don't think Morris is going to be on the roster. No, he's because <coughs> and, and less, and the only way is if Saquon didn't play. I was going to say, I think That's he's in charge for Saquon, yeah. Um, but he's here now, and I, I support him as the leader of the Alphardite Nation. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take questions in like a couple minutes. So think of them. You could just come up, you just come up and say them. We'll repeat them. Yes. Anything else you guys want to get off your mind before we roll? And that, thank you to Toe for Pete. Toe for Pete. Toe for Pete. Not only did he sign up to cook, when I was late and Justin was mad at me, yep. I called Topher Pete and I was like, hey, can you go buy all the food? Yep. I did pay him back, so I'm not that bad of a guy. But Topher Pete saved the day today. Yes, he did. If Good you job. haven't went and got food, there's plenty. There, go, there's go no way we dogs. ran out. People Hot are, dog was fantastic. People, the glizzy. It's called a glizzy on Talking yeah. Giants. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a beer when you said it on Twitter. <laughs> Talking Giants is a very weird show where in the month of July, because there's nothing going on, oh, yeah. where... 70% of our content last July was just retweeting hot dog. The picture's a hot dog. <laughs> yep. so. Um, so we're getting – I see some Talking Giants versus the World shirts. Yes. Football is a contact sport. That was a Justin shirt. Yes. It's a cool shirt. I'm I glad thanked there, – there's a woman wearing it. I thanked her right because that was like my – Right in front of you. I know. I, I, th- I thanked her because that I was love it. my – that was like my baby last year because we, we do have like a retro looking football's a contact sport. Um, so, yeah, a lot of uh, snacks is wearing a, uh, only uh, once a giant. Uh, for me, it's only a giant. I got that Eli quote. For right. once a, like once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. Yeah. Which, do you think Eli came up with that line on his own? Because it is the most perfect line of all time. I do. I think he, he thought about that for a while. He ha- Could you imagine the pressure? It's like, ha- however, however. Did you cry there, when Eli retired? There is no doubt. You know what? I, I, have one, I, I have a pretty good claim to fame with that. I am literally, I saw every single one of his snaps live. Every one? Every one of He's them. Been there, yeah. I know. Oh, that's right. You go to every one You didn't of miss his a preseason snaps. game. Ever, so listen to this. Ne- every one of his snaps ever he took live. 
Now, I'll tell you a funny story. So, did someone uh, steal my phone? I did. No, I didn't. No. Oh, here it's it right is. There. Steiner Sports did a, a meet and greet with Eli Manning at dinner. And, and he invited me to that dinner. Not Eli, Steiner. And I got a chance to sit with Eli for a second. And I said, you know, I just want to tell you. I know, you know you, you're hanging him up. You know, I've seen every one of your snaps as a giant. And he said, and Geno's too? <laughs> Did he really? The funny, I tweeted it when it happened. Is that oh not the best line ever? Line. Now, is you, that not the greatest line ever? That's a fantastic ever. line. I Phenomenal. feel bad for Geno Smith because if I, if Geno Smith walked up. should not take any hate at all. But it doesn't matter. It, do, it doesn't will. make sense. If he walked up, I'd be like, go away. I don't like you. And it's not his fault at all. But no. It's, no, it's McAdoo's fault. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, look, he gets as much hate as uh, people that for no reason hate on Wayne Gallman. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> we could talk about receiving, but that's not what the people are here for. <laughs> Um, all right, so we could take some questions. Do I don't know if even know if people can hear us. Just no. Does anyone want to ask us a question? <laughs> Yell it. Yell, Yell it. it. What's your name? Let's say Daniel right, Jones. So the one? heaviest question first. My God. Um, Repeat the question. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones or Eli Manning. Is Daniel Jones? All right, let, 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 let's further elaborate. Next year, when yes. When you say average, you mean no improvement off last year? What's our record? Improvement off last year? I would say like we're 9-8, and eight, he's the 16th best quarterback. And the I Bears that he pick said, is not in the top five. It's I like love that he said 9-8, and eight, though. That just killed me because that's yeah, a, nine, better than 500. Yeah, 9-8 and eight feels good, honestly. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, he just killed me with the 9-8. and eight. I was hoping, I hoping he was um, say something else. What was your name? Henry. Thank you for the, uh, the, uh, the question, Henry. Henry. Listen, bottom line is... There are no excuses. This is it. He is, if, if he's not the quarterback, you're going to know this year. Is he going to buy himself another year if he's average? Man, I don't know. Because I don't know how many times the Giants are going to be set up with two first-round draft picks and another first-round draft pick in 23. So if, you, if he shits the bed, okay, and is just average and is still making the same mistakes over and over again, the Giants have to look at combining all three number one picks and going anywhere they want in the draft. Yeah. And that's so, it's, it's, I can't believe I, I'm even saying that because that means it's going to take us back another few years. Yeah. It's just a hard realization as Giant fans, you want Daniel Jones to succeed. And anybody that's on social media that is not pushing him to succeed is just an absolute dick to yeah. me. Yeah. I'm I with agree. you on that. But um, uh, my quick answer with that, if they go 9-8, and eight, I'm assuming they make the playoffs. That, that's my assumption. That's a, that's a assumption. With seven eight. teams making it, you know, and if they make the playoffs and they go 9-8, and eight, that to me tells me Gettleman's keeping his job. If Gettleman keeps his job, Jones stays because Gettleman drafted Jones. So my answer to you is if we make the playoffs, which I think we would at 9-8, and eight, Jones stays. Even if he's a middle-of-the-pack quarterback, the Giants still have him under another year under the rookie salary with the potential fifth-year option. We have a winning record this year. I think Jones stays on. I think Gettleman stays on as well. Yeah. All right. What do you guys think, honestly? I want to hear from, from Justin and Bobby because it's a hot take with Jones right now, and this is it. If they don't have a pick in the top five, then I don't see them. I don't see them trading up. I just, it won't happen. I just don't think it will happen. Whether you like it or dislike it, part of me likes their loyalty and their, and their patience. Yeah. If they didn't have that loyalty and patience, number 10 may have not stuck. Like, Eli may have not stuck around with some, some, some organizations. If you, if you just copy and paste it to Washington – they may have moved on, but the Giants gave him a chance, and he did well. You know, people just overreacted. I think um, that was complete uh, uh, ownership. I, I think McAdoo wanted him gone, and I'm, I would have loved to have seen what McAdoo could have done as a coach if he had it his way. I'm not saying he would have been good, not good. I don't know. I mean, a lot of people say he was a genius. Um, I just thought he was uh, too cocky for around here. He immediately slicked back the hair and treated it like he was Belichick, and he didn't do anything to, to get that respect. Yeah. This is totally off topic, but it reminds me, because we've been fighting the Joe Judge fight the last week or so. The reason why Joe, Joe Judge is genuinely him. Now, people, th like, people outside are like, oh, he's trying to be a Bill Belichick clone. It's like anyone who's been around him knows that the way he does things is his way. Yeah. You know, and he's very personable. Like, they, com they compare him to Matt Patricia. The media in Detroit, that's Detroit media compared to New York media, hated Matt Patricia because he, yeah. he was just not a nice guy. Like, if you listen to an interview, he was disrespectful to people. 
Ben McAdoo tried to get like control, and he couldn't do it. Like you know, team, he couldn't do it. You have that's to. That's perfect. You, you just have to do be it. who you are from the start. Start. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't work, but people when people are saying stop trying to be a Belichick clone, it's like that's not what Judge is trying to be. He's he. That is one hundred percent. Yeah, who act, he is. actually, I hear. I don't know about you guys. I hear a hell of a lot more people giving, giving. Uh, Dan uh, Campbell. No, McAdoo. Oh, McAdoo. Sorry. You know about being a, uh, a Bill Belichick. Yeah. I don't really hear a lot of Judge being being talked about like a Belichick. Do you, is it online like that? I don't. I don't hear that as much. Well. I mean, Maybe I don't know. I'm a little on Twitter too much, but, you know, the Jeff Schwartz types and all those people, you know. Jeff Schwartz, he should take a freaking lap. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wish he'd show up. Oh, boy. You know, sometimes people are mean online, and then you meet them in person, and they're nice. If Jeff Schwartz is here, I wouldn't be nice to him. Like, I know there's people. There's, how many people have told me I'm an asshole at some point here? Come on. we got to have at least. <laughs> like two weeks ago, I did. No, but the whole no, thing in the car on the way over here. The whole thing about Judge, you know. And I think I you know, might have been listening to another Giants podcast that talked about this last year, and they were talking about this. But he's a people person. You know, really, and I don't you – know, I'm not going to say McAdoo and Shermer weren't people persons, but it, what it ultimately comes down to when Judge People's is behind people. camera, he is genuine and he is authentic. And that is not something that you really got from McAdoo and Shermer. Shermer just being kind of just – it's a little socially awkward, but McAdoo definitely, you know, trying to reinvent himself as, you know. <laughs> he his, got rid of the mushroom haircut. You know, his, his quarter, said he his slicked quarter it life, 30 so Anyone who life changes places. their hair totally from one year to the next, right. don't trust them. Yeah. Right, yeah. he tried to do something different. The yeah. impression I got Don't with try and make your hair look like anybody else's. Just be yourself. I'm on. Wow. You do tell him, Bobby. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the impression I got, though, with McAdoo and Shermer was they were coordinators trying to be head coaches. The impression I get with judges, the, the second I – and I think everybody here agrees with me. When we heard Judge on the opening press conference, we're like, that's, that's a head coach. Yeah. That's what we've been missing. We've been missing that leader yeah. for the New York Giants. I agree. Tyler? With with, with, with everybody else, with McAdoo, his, his press conference was the same thing every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go look at the tape. I'm going to go look at the tape. I'm going to go look at the tape. Um, and the same thing with Shermer. Shermer wasn't, you know, again, Shermer, I like you. And I was pro Shermer, but I, that so was, was my I. biggest critique. I, he is an offense coordinator. I was not. I, I was I was okay with keeping Shermer and okay with firing. I was whatever because it was for Jones. That's the reason. I didn't think he was a good head coach, but it was for the stability for Daniel Jones. So I would, one way or the other. But in terms of a head coach, I think we got our guy. I think oh we yeah, got our man. Coach. I I I I'm a, I'm a Joe Judge believer. Any any more questions? Anybody? What's your name? Uh, Alex. Alex. So basically, his question is, we're good, and we still have a high pick because of the Bears. Okay. Um, it's a, you go ahead. I think Matt, Matt Parrott, is Matt Parrott good or not? Because if he's not, we got to draft offensive linemen. And, and I know, and I'm glad we traded back. Like, getting that first-round pick, I mean, we're having conversations like that because of it. But I know people wanted wide receiver, and, like, people were pissed off when the, the Eagles traded up for Devontae Smith. I was cheering. I, was I like, didn't want Bring him. me I didn't want him. Rayshon Slater. Bring, uh, I was like, I would even take Elijah Vera Tucker. When the Jets traded up, it broke my heart because I thought we could almost trade back and get him. But it's – we can expect this offensive line to be better and hope it grows, but it's hard to expect that Hernandez on his last year is going to get a ton better. Shane Lemieux – and listen, like, maybe it will, but it's, it's, it's hard to expect that. Or if there's, there's some pass rushers out there. I mean, it doesn't matter how good Aziz Ojolari is. If there's a pass rusher out there, I would look that yeah, way. You know, it, if it comes to getting ad, adding an elite pass rusher, especially if we're talking about the guys like, if we're talking about adding a Joey Bosa-like player, you know, a Chase Young-like player, maybe not as good as those guys to start, but a, a player like that, it is so, so tough in the NFL right now to find good pass rushers. I've said it a million times on Talking Giants, and I'll say it again right now. I said I'm Bleeding Blue, too. Ten players in the National Football League last year had 10-plus sacks. In 1985, there were 30 guys that had 10-plus sacks. So there was one for every team. So getting a guy that gets 10-plus sacks, it's very, very difficult to get in the National Football League. And if you can find one of those guys who can kind of change your game, also without having to spend a lot for your pass rusher as well, because for the first five years, he's going to be under team control and he's going to be cheap versus having to overpay for pass rushers that could hit the open market and maybe they're below average. or they're Hence my 
face when Jones was drafted. So, yeah. <laughs> it's not because of freaking Daniel Josh Jones. Allen. Josh Allen. It's because Josh Allen was sitting there, and I thought we needed a complete game That was changer, my favorite player in the draft. And that was it. And I, 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 I had no problem with Jones, just not at six. Yeah. And, I, I mean, I really wanted, what's his name, that went to the Bucks. Uh, White. I yep. wanted Devin White so bad, and when he was He's taken, so and then when the when the Don't when the Raiders the linebacker though, he he would have been the pick if he was there. He's a beast. I love him. He's so good. I just want to circle back to the question because I want to make sure I heard it right. He said if we had a top five pick from the Bears, Jones was good and we were good, right? Yeah. Like okay. It's, we're not even thinking about. QB. Okay. So the the, yeah. the the two obvious positions if we're not thinking quarterback is like you said, offensive line or edge. That, that we need a dominant edge. I don't care how good Old Jalari is, we could still use another one. And we need to improve the offensive line. But the other thing, if we're not going quarterback and we're picking top five that I think is completely open to the Giants, is trading down. Uh, trading down again and getting more draft capital. If you have a top three, four pick, you trade down. You move down to eight, nine. You get another future first round pick. That That's an option as well. Now, Chris, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you on that. And somebody who like likes value and you know likes to look at the numbers and the analytics whatnot, there does come a point, and I guess this is maybe old school of me, how dare me? Old school of me. There just come a point where it's like, all right, well, the Giants already have 10 picks next year, five within the first three rounds. You know, let's let's just acquire talent, and I'm not against it, but also, like, let's just get these guys, let's get these picks, and let's reward ourselves for doing oh, I'm an with awesome you. job. It's yeah. just an option. It's, yeah. New England yeah. did it for years. It's, and I, I didn't even want a draft pick this year. It's nice yeah. to I wanted to keep going back a million times. <laughs> I really did. I, never, I didn't want one, one pick. We yeah. got addicted to it. I, wanted, straight, well, I yeah. wanted every. Let's trade down. It's nice to talk about trading down without the, well, Dave Gellman has never traded down. Like, Man. I'm glad we don't have to. It's out of the way. We let don't me, have to use that disclaimer ever again. Let me ask you the hypothetical. If I would have told you guys before the draft, who did you want at pick 11? Who, who was the guy you wanted? I wanted I wanted a, one of the three. The, all right, so I, we'll I, say I, Smith. But I, but I, want, no, I definitely no. did not want Smith. Okay, okay. I definitely did not. He was one of the few people that didn't want Smith. And give you credit not only, for that. hold on, but give me credit for the wide receiver I did want. And Tony. I remember I was on your show Yes! I was on your show when I said, that. there's one dude I want in this draft, not at 11. Right. There's one pick, dude, wide receiver I want, and it's, it's uh, Kadarius Tony. Tony. And I, said, I think I said on yours as well. But the point is, I definitely wanted one of the two big receivers. Um, we we kind of knew that they were going to be gone. But for everybody to be up in arms... That chicken legs went to the Eagles, or they jumped <laughs> over. They jumped over to get him. I didn't care one bit. I don't know why it was such a big deal. Because he won the Heisman. I'm with, I, I'm with you. I'm with the you, guy's by the way. gonna suck. I He's gonna be in the I blue wasn't tent. A Smith fan either. He's gonna be in the blue tent all year long. You're you were a Slater fan like me. Yeah, you like you wanted Parsons, right? No, I wa- I 100 percent wanted one of the two big receivers. Right, okay. If I, I, if I would have given you two options before the draft, because you, you would have been happy regardless. Parsons. You like Tony. I was happy. Slater at 11, or trade down to 20, get a first, and end up with Tony. What would you have preferred before the draft? Wow. Well, I know I definitely wanted Time to trade set. down, because when that tr- happened, like you, when you're on live on air, you can't fake your emotions. I no, no, excited. I was happy with the trade. But I'm saying before the draft starts, I tell you, you end up with the guy we both wanted. We get Slater, or we're trading down, we're getting the first, and we're taking a wide receiver. There was a, that's t- I haven't thought about that, which is crazy. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be a contrarian. And I'm gonna say Slater because you know what? We would have we would be having like we would feel good about a lot better about the offensive line right now. And maybe it's 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 a little short sighted because Tony's probably not gonna play a ton this year. What? <laughs> what, what I absolutely about? think he's going to play a ton. You think he plays more? Than I think 60% he's going to play a ton. Snaps. That's a great number. Sixty. That's that a great that, number. That would bro. mean he's the starter. or He's not the starter. That is so unfair that you shot that at me. I almost said fifty, but I wanted, I made it harder on you. And you should have said forty the way you the way you put it up there. But I'm gonna if you are telling me 55 percent. What do you want to bet? I'm over it. He's going over. Bet him that jersey. You get the Joe Judge jersey. Here's the issue. It can, can, we do, can we do? Can we do the percentage and only games where Sterling Shepard's healthy? Wow, that's another unfair advantage because part of my thinking. First of all, it's another thing I said. I think Sterling Shepard's going to going to blow up this yeah. year. I pray he to God. Eighty percent of Jones's pass. Yeah, I, I, and he's going about to catch more because of Galladay. But I, I, I really, really hope that he stays healthy because this is it for him. 
Yeah. One more, one more visit. Actually, it might be it for him anyway, but one more visit, and that's it. Yeah. And, and Kadarius Tony would just take his spot. I'm going to still say around 60% of the snaps. I think that's a good number. All right, let's bet. If I win, you say Bobby Skinner is the smartest man of all alive and follow him. What do you want? All alive. And uh, you cut your hair again. I've had a few Bud Lights. Well, I didn't what I Okay, say, you know what? Say. Let's do that. Let's do that because I might want to cut my hair and I could just uh, blame fair it enough. on that. And I could always say you're the greatest and smartest man on the face of the earth. Yeah, my, I, I definitely lost that, that, that one. How long have we been going? <laughs> you could see it on the roadcast. We are at 40 minutes, so we got time oh, for yeah. one more question. We got, we got a ton of time. Ty, you're, he's Tyler. I saw his lasers on Twitter. Oh, lasers. His lasers. Can I get a pick real quick? Of course. Guys. Yeah. Okay, I was about to. You ask guys them that asked question. the toughest question. Mike. I was about to ask them that question because, and and I'm. I was ready for like, what's your favorite color? And you guys are asking me the hardest questions of the offseason. I don't want to talk to you. Last year, Evan I, Evan Ingram always breaks my heart. Last year, I thought he was going to take off. You got Jason Garrett. You got the tight end. Jason went and thrived in the scheme. This year, we pick up Rudolph, and maybe I'm going to look like a fool again because Ingram pissed all of us off last year. I think Ingram. Less is more. I think he's going to get a lot. He's going to get a lot more production with less targets because now he's not the number one option in the passing game. He's the number three. He's the number four. So my what I'm going to tell you is, I think he's going to have 650, 700 yards. I think he's going to have five or six. I think he's going to have a good year. Contract he's, he's year. He's still on the. He's still on trade, but he's still on the block for sure. He is. It's crazy because he's still on the trade block. He, but but we're not signing. Stay him. healthy. He stays healthy, and he has the worst year of his. Career. I, 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 you know him. what? I will say something funny though. If Toli Oliolio didn't get hurt, <laughs> and if if uh, if if uh, who's who's the uh, uh, draft pick? So, uh, uh, what's Don't his name? disrespect Caden Smith, please. No, not Caden Smith. I love Caden Smith. Who's who, who's uh, uh, Smith? Caden Smith. No, the other one with the E. Ellerson. Yeah, Ellerson. If oh. Ellerson, uh, he just got hurt. He just got hurt doing. Yep. Did you see that, by the way? Am I breaking was news it, here? Did you see video? it on Twitter? No. no. Uh, um, Gettleman said. Oh, yeah, well, Gettleman said. Yeah, that Gettleman about said he hurt doing he practice. And he judge was doing. Was like, no, and Judge was like, it was not conditioning. <laughs> Why? I was like, wait a minute. What? I mean, it was like complete opposite. Well, that's yeah. the first thing I want to talk about. But anyway, with that said, if if. He didn't get hurt, and now another person didn't get hurt. I mean, I guess you can't really put him on the trade block anymore. So, I don't know. Maybe less is more. I think the Giants are going to offer him something. Unless he's a train wreck, the Giants are going to offer him something yep. in the middle of the season, and they're going to be like, but, you, you know. I, I, I think he's. I think he middle of the season he signs an extension. Does, does uh, Peppers get an extension before the first game? No. And if he doesn't, I don't think he's staying, which sucks. I think anger. Uh, here's, you know, Bobby and I, we both kind of talked ourselves into this kind of take. We're about oh, to we're hey, oh, hey. hey. Just kidding. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, I think You're Bobby in front of three. Th yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're in front of 75,000 people live wow, right 75, now. 75,000 people. It always happens when I'm about to give a take. What did she say? I don't Something know. Something about a sister. She yeah. said, your guy's blonde hair is better than mine. <laughs> It, this always happens when I'm about to give a take, and this evening, this evening is just our show in general. Uh, before you, no, I'm just kidding. No, before I say something, no, uh, Bobby and I, we've kind of talked mm. ourselves into because we talk to each other so much. We've talked ourselves into Evan Ingram staying and Jabril Peppers inevitably leaving, and that's not something I don't know if we want. I don't think any no, sane. No, I definitely it's don't not want that. A, I don't think any sane person would want that, but it comes down to you know Jabril Peppers. A pseudo first round pick by the Giants, not really a first round pick, but a pseudo first round pick, and then Evan Ingram was just out, uh, a straight up first round pick by the Giants. And I understand it wasn't the same GM. Let me ask you, but fifth year option. So your your guys' predictions were keeping Ingram. Do you think it's a tag, or do you think we give him a, a second contract? Well, I think, I think it contract. depends how he does this year. He could be smart, and if he has just maybe an average year where, all right, I'm just going to take the second contract, take the guaranteed money, and just roll with it there. Um, but also, I want Evan Ingram. Not to be like lined up as like a quote unquote wide receiver, but I want him taking more outline, out wide snaps this year, as opposed to being that in line tight end that's used in the intermediate part of the field. Because that's why you brought on Kyle Rudolph and you paid him all that. That's money. what I was about to say. Granted, we are hoping that Kyle Rudolph gets healthy and that kind of plan of using multiple tight ends it possibly does change. But if we use Evan Ingram the same way as an intermediate option in the middle of the field and relying on him getting open and separation with running those short routes, I think we're in a 
again, we're in a bad spot where he's also playing volleyball for the USA Olympics team. So, um, <laughs> you can't. It can't be that bad. All right, we're going to wrap up. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. You guys can ask Justin. I was scared that no one was going to show up and we were going to look like more, even more fools than you. We could have pretended there were people here. Yeah, but that wouldn't have helped my ego. So. <laughs> We appreciate you guys. If you haven't gotten a sticker, by the way, come up and, and get one. Get a sticker. We appreciate you guys. License plate guy, Joe, thank I you. I love it. I love it. Anything that you guys do, anything that you three do, I will always be a part of. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Thank you, my man. Oh, that's metal. I don't, I'm going to save that, Cam. I'm not even going to well, hey, drink I, one. I just, I just got a new plate. That was very cool. Of that. Of, uh, of her, look at that. Her. I just got ad? a new plate. Hashtag ad? I love it. Chris the Entertainer. We appreciate you. Thank you. Of course. I no. I, I Justin I, Penick. I, I love give, you guys. Oh, sorry. No, no, I love you guys. I appreciate you for having me on. And we thank you to everybody for showing up. Justin, thank you guys. Thank you for everything you do. I give you. I give him a lot of crap, but he does a really good job. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, I would have showed up here like two hours late. Would have been like, yeah, let's just talk into our phone for five minutes. It wasn't for me being a nervous wreck the last 72 hours. Uh, I don't know if this would happen. And also, thank you, Maddie Mass. Thank you, Chris. Behind the scenes people at John Boy Media gave us a wonderful coffee table, coffee uh, table, uh, roadcaster, and you know we look good and we sound good. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. Tremendous. No thanks to Danny King or Snacks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Danny's not even paying attention. What's new? And thank and thank you to me. Yeah. Thank you. Now, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you in there. Joe Judge is probably going to yell you guys. Until then, let's go Big Blue. Let's go.